them. We will continue to see this year after year, school after school, kid after kid. This you know, one is on all of us. Said, it's just, on every single one of us to do something. So he I'm here to stand up for the people of Texas. He said That's why I'm health was broken here. He said we are 50th. Health only. We are 50th. He we are 50th in the nation in mental health care access. 50th. There are only 50 states in the nation. We are dead last. The number one provider of mental health care services under Greg Abbott in the state of Texas is the county jail system in the state of Texas. The largest inpatient mental health care facility in the state of Texas is the Harris County Jail in downtown Houston, Texas. He's refused to expand Medicaid, which would bring $10 billion a year, including mental health care access for people who need it. He's refused. To, to champion red flag laws. When somebody says that they are having trouble, that they may kill somebody, they may kill themselves, a red flag law would protect the public. He's refused, he's refused, he's refused, he's refused to support safe storage laws so young people cannot get their hands on their parents' guns. He, he's refused, he's refused to support, he's refused to support a ban on AR-15s and AK-47s. This 18-year-old who just turned 18 bought an AR-15 and took it into an elementary school and shot kids in the face and killed them. Why are we letting this happen in this country? Why is this happening in this state? Year after year, city after city, this is on all of us if we do not do something and I am gonna do something and I'm not alone. The people of Texas are with us. The majority of the people of Texas are with us, but we've got to stand up to this or we just accept this theater and business as usual and we accept the next shooting. We could have stopped this if we had stood up after Santa Fe High School, if we had stood up after El Paso, we are gonna stop the next one. We're standing up right here in Uvalde, Texas right now. That's why I'm here. That's what the people of Texas want right now. That's what we're gonna focus on. Better, 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 better. better. There are parents and guardians. There are parents and guardians who are nervous about what can happen to other schools. Other schools, they're worried about other schools. What about the gun? We can do something. What makes this one different? Why is it different? Todo lo que es posible para prevenir estas masacres que tenemos en, en cada comunidad, Sutherland Springs, Santa Fe High School en el condado uh, acerca de Harris, uh, en El Paso también. Um, tenemos el poder, pero necesitamos hacer algo en este momento. Si no hacemos algo, vamos a continuar con las masacres como la masacre que tuvimos aquí en Uvalde uh, en, el, en, el, en esta semana aquí. Es algo muy triste, pero no aceptamos este. No, no es el futuro del Estado. Tenemos el poder cambiar el futuro. Por eso estoy aquí. Pero, pero, parents of the victims. Parents of the victims have been talking to us saying they're scared for other schools. There are things going on social media. We, we, owe, those, we owe those parents our prayers, and I'm praying for them, and I've called them, and I've talked them to them today. We owe them our help and our assistance. We'll do everything we can to raise the resources to make sure that we pay for funerals for any needs that they may have, but we owe those parents action. I, I've talked to the parents in, in El Paso. I've talked to the parents in Santa Fe High School. I, I've talked to the parents in Midland, Odessa. They, they want us to do something right now. I want us to do something right now. We can do something right now, but if we continue to accept this, then it is on us. It's not just the governor's fault. It, it is on us. I'm not going to accept it, so I'm here. I'm calling attention to this, and I'm asking all Texans of good conscience, and I could care less whether you're a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent, to stand up right now for yourself, for your kids, for our families, and to stop the next shooting just like this one. And what do you say, sir? What do you say to Texas Governor Greg Abbott? He says now is not anywhere. An 18-year-old kid who doesn't have a driver's license can't buy a beer. He should not have been able to buy an AR-15. Right there. Do you want a solution? Stop selling AR-15s in the state of Texas. You want a solution? have universal background checks we don't have them you want a solution red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders which stop a shooting before it happens you want a solution safe storage laws those are four solutions that have been brought up by the people of texas each one of those has broad bipartisan support right now we could get that done if we had a governor who cared more about the people of texas than he does his own political career or his fealty to the nra and if you need any proof of that check the schedule for the nra's convention this friday right here in the state of texas five of the worst mass shootings in u.s history right in this state on his watch what does he do about it he goes to the nra convention to brag about how easy he has made it to purchase guns in this state and to carry them publicly without a background check without any training or vetting 
whatsoever. It is absolutely wrong. In fact, it is insane. The governor talks about mental health. It is insane that we allow an 18 year old to go in and buy an AR-15. What the hell did we think he was going to do with that? This one is on us. And what do you say to Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who says now is not the time to make this political? Now is the time to stop the next shooting. Um, right after Santa Fe High School was the time to stop the next shooting. Right after El Paso was the time to stop the next shooting. Right after Midland Odessa was the time to, to stop the next shooting. And in each case, we say this isn't the time. Now is the time, like literally right now. That's why I'm here. Um, that's what we want as a state. Uh, that, that, that's what I want as a parent. I've got three kids who are in high school and middle school and elementary school. That's what they want. And, and I face their judgment and my conscience and ultimately my maker for what I do when I have the chance to, to change this. And I'm going to do everything in my power to change this. And I am not alone. The majority of Texas is with us on this right now. The majority of Texas is not reflected by that governor or those people around the table who talk about mental health care or say that this is pure evil or that it was absolutely unpredictable. This is predictable. It will happen and it will continue to happen until we change course. We've got to change course. What changed this time after all the other times you failed to make change? What has, what has changed this time that makes you so certain? You know, there are some, and I, I, I saw the line, I don't know who said it. They said, listen, um, the debate on, on, on responsible gun laws ended the day after Sandy Hook, the day after the Congress was unable to pass meaningful gun reform. I, I don't buy that. I, I think anything that is tough to do in this country is going to require sometimes years, sometimes decades, sometimes millions of us coming together. But we have the will. We, we are going to do this. I'm absolutely confident of it. Everyone is going to do all that they can with what they have, where they are. Right now, it is us here in Uvalde doing this right now. There are others across the state of Texas who are with us. I'm confident that we're going to overcome. I, I don't know when and I don't know how, but I do know that we've got to do everything that we can with what we have. We have got to try. Hablar sobre el estado mental de la gente. Pero lo más frustrante para usted y el punto que quiere hacer usted esta tarde es que. Pues vamos a continuar con las masacres aquí en Texas si no cambiamos las leyes sobre las armas que tenemos aquí y también la oportunidad de ir a un doctor para su salud mental. Uh, pero si, si no cambiamos, um, vamos a tener cada año, cada semana, cada día en, en este estado. La responsable es con nosotros y, y tenemos ser responsables a nuestros hijos y nietos porque va a continuar si no cambiamos. Específicamente, ¿qué está pidiendo usted al gobernador esta tarde y por qué lo interrumpió? Necesitamos cambiar las leyes del Estado. Por ejemplo, necesitamos un background check, una revisión universal para cada persona que quiere comprar armas en, en este estado. Necesitamos red flag laws para que podamos parar un masacre antes que, que pasa. Um, necesitamos, como se dice, safe storage laws para que niños no pueden usar las armas de sus padres. Um, y necesitamos uh, ofrecer más oportunidades, ir a un doctor. Uh, somos uh, el último estado en acceso de salud mental. We're, we're 50th in access to mental health care. All of these things are within the power of the governor and the lieutenant governor and the speaker of the legislature that are up there right now. We can change this. Podemos cambiar. Tenemos el poder. Gracias. What, what do you say to uh, almost certain criticism from your opponents that you're trying to capitalize politically on the I, I'm trying to do something before it happens again. And as I said earlier, I, I wish somebody had stood up after Santa Fe, after Sutherland Springs, after El Paso, after Midland Odessa. Um, it, it's never the right time. It's never a good time. Th this is the only time that we are all focused 
on what just happened. It's the only time to call for the action that we need that's going to prevent this from happening again. And, and I know that there are a majority of us of good conscience and goodwill in the state of Texas of, of all political parties, of all backgrounds who want to do the right thing. And I'm just saying right now is the time to do the right thing. Are you going to be mid meeting with family members or have you already? Uh... I have. I've been, I've been talking to family members. Uh, I'm going to be meeting with some family members. Um, I've been talking with the county judge, the county commissioner, um, people within the community. Um, as you know, this is a community I've been to. And it's a community that I want to continue to come back to. And I just want to do everything that I can right now. And in addition to offering our prayers and our support and our resources, we must lead and we must act. You once said you we're going to take your AR-15. So are we ready to say that again today? No one should have an AR-15. There, there is no reason unless you are a soldier on a battlefield, because that is a weapon of war designed to take human life. That high impact, high velocity round shreds everything inside of your body once it makes impact. Y you are supposed to bleed out when you're shot, and that's exactly what happens. You don't need it for hunting. You don't need it for self-defense. So my position is the same. No one should have an AR-15 or an AK-47. Okay, we are hearing from Beto O'Rourke. We are going to, yes, one of the families wants to meet. For those of you who are still listening and we are now walking with Beto O'Rourke, he is planning to meet with one of the families of those victims in that horrific shooting. So we are still waiting for Beto O'Rourke to make it back to us right now. But that we would do something after all that. 23 people killed on a Saturday before school started in August of 2019. Kids who watched their grandparents and We're going to go back to bed away. over the time. A high school freshman who was killed right before the first day of school. The governor came, did the same damn thing in our community, and not only did nothing improve, he made it worse. He signed permitless carry. Law enforcement, police chiefs, sheriffs begged him not to. They said, listen, governor, it's going to make our job deadlier. It's going to make it tougher for us to protect those that we were sworn to serve. He turned his back on law enforcement and did it anyhow. Texas leads the nation in the number of law enforcement who've been gunned down. We've seen a spike in gun violence. And, and though he said this was unpredictable, this is totally predictable given what the governor has I'm done. I'm from El Paso. That's actually my mom's Walmart. But I just want to I'm ask sorry. in your conversations with the families, are they saying we don't care about politics or our, you know, we have to protect our kids? What are they saying to you? The, the are families are in shock. The, the families are, are grieving. Um, I, I talked to uh, one father who said his wife was talking to a counselor while I was talking to him. They just lost their baby girl. And uh, and I, I, he, he doesn't know. I, I wouldn't know what to say, you know, it, it, and I can only imagine. And we all hate to imagine that. Um, and hopefully we never experience that. Um, but, but we owe them something. We owe them something. We, we owe this country something. We owe our kids something. We, we owe the, the children in the next school where a gunman's going to walk in with an AR-15 unless we intervene and stop that. We owe them something. And, and that's why I'm here. It, it's on all of our conscience right now. It's on yours too. And I know as members of the press, maybe you can't say anything. You, you, you have got to be feeling this right now. And you've got to see that the road that we're on will lead to more of these shootings unless we change it. It's on us to change it. You call this theater, uh, someone called this theater. What's your response to those calling this? And I call this change. I call this change. We have a dad because of change. We have a dad no, 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 one second. Oh, please, please, from ABC News, we... we I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to go talk to his dad. Okay, for those of you who are... Why are you calling you a sick son of a bitch? What do you call him? A sick son of a bitch. Mr. The only thing that is sick is to allow this to continue to happen day after day, year after year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your service. It. God bless do you. Think, yes. Do you think this was the right time to do this? I mean, some people are calling it a publicity stunt. If, if I didn't think it was right, I wouldn't be here. Um, you, you tell me when the right time is to stand up to save kids in Texas. It's right now. It's every single day. And I'm going to do whatever I can, whatever it takes, to make sure that we prevent these kinds of massacres from continuing to happen. This wasn't Beto. politics today? This is, this is about change. And, and the only way that we're going to change is to stop this from continuing to happen. This, this, this is going to continue Mr. to happen. Mr. Beto, you from Beto. Texas. This is a wild, wild west. Thank Nicaragua. you so much for what you did up there. I was the only one who had your back out there. I appreciate what you do. I appreciate what you did, what you stood up there and told them. I mean, I think it's a bunch of crap what's going on. I think it's a bunch of crap. My, I have about five or six friends that lost their kids yesterday, and it's devastating. My family is okay, but my community is screwed. And all there is is pain in this town. I feel like there's a dark cloud above us, and it's just not going away. 
but I mean, they violated our constitutional rights up there by, by first, freedom of the press. They kicked us all out, all of us. They kicked us all out. Freedom of speech, they kicked that out. The freedom to put, the, the right to petition your government, that right was violated. And the officer that escorted me out of the building did fail, failure to identify. That's company policy, that's that's government policy. You have to identify when, you, when your name is, when your name and badge number is, is asked for from a citizen, from a, for, uh, as a public servant. They violated our rights. They, I mean, this is ridiculous. This is getting ridiculous. The the governor just came and made a mockery of this town. That's all he did. He just came to laugh at us. That's all he did. I, I'm so sorry for what you're going through, for what your community is going through. We appreciate you. I'm, I'm here for you. I'm going to stay here. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I'm going to make sure, Cynthia, if, if you don't mind sharing my, my cell yeah. phone number, yes. I want you to reach out to me. Call me. Yes, Tell me how I help your family. Tell me how I help those families that you know that have lost somebody already. Nothing's too big, nothing's too small. We We're here for you. All right, man. Thank you. Beto, you can get those. What can you do about it? We, we, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up to you to do that. Sorry. We'll catch up to you. Mr. Beto. Beto. Mr. Beto. With you, okay? Beto, you said it was insanity. You said, what do you think about it? Governor Abbott said that mental health is the issue, but he did not mention guns. You said that is the definition of insanity. Can you explain? Yeah, for, for the. The members of law enforcement begged him not to pass because it makes it easier for people to carry guns in public, makes it easier for 18 year olds to buy AR 15s, weapons originally designed for use on the battlefield. Um, th this is on the governor of the state of Texas. Don't let her get in your bed. You're saying this shooting is on the governor of the state of Texas. And everyone until we he make... He's at fault and, and here. Here's he, the blame. Absolutely. And every single one of these until we change. And he has, he has the power to change. Tell me what substantive change. What do you mean? What needs to change specifically? I'm talking about universal background checks. I'm talking about red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders. When someone is showing signs that they're going to harm themselves or harm somebody else, we need a way to intervene. I'm talking about banning the sale of AR-15s. This 18-year-old who just turned 18 was able to go in and buy a weapon originally designed for you on a battlefield and turn it around and kill elementary school kids in their classrooms, shooting them in the face. Um, the governor has the power to lead that agenda and to make sure that we no longer have to worry about that in the state of Texas. Warning signs, the fact that this kid was telling kids at school that he was going to kill them, posting pictures of himself harming animals, cutting himself. Should somebody have noticed that? That's why some states with real leaders have adopted extreme risk protection orders. This is not an act of God. This is not pure insanity. Um, this is not completely unpredictable. This, this doesn't have to be our fate. It is totally within our control. And more than anyone, it's within the hands of the governor of the state of Texas. And he has chosen time and time again, the NRA and the gun lobby over the people and the children of Texas. And it was those kids yesterday who paid the price it was my neighbors in El Paso in 2019 who paid the price. It was those the month later in Midland, Odessa, who paid the price. The year before in Santa Fe High School and in Sutherland Springs, who paid the price. We will continue to pay the price for his fealty to the NRA and his unwillingness to do what is necessary to save the lives of our fellow Texans. That's why we've got to stand up, and I'm standing up to be counted right now. This wild, wild west mentality has got to stop, right? This has got to stop. We're okay, you have been hurrying from Beto O'Rourke, who rushed the stage as Governor Greg Abbott had just finished his remarks. We are not sure if we're actually going to be allowed back into the auditorium, so we are staying I'm, with Beto I'm right now. About the kids, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm worried about the, the families of those children. I'm worried about the, the next school shooting. I'm, I'm worried about this continuing to happen all the time, every year, day after day in the state of Texas and, until we change. Um, it, it, it is the fact that an 18 year old could walk in and buy a weapon designed for war and use something that is supposed to kill enemy soldiers on a battlefield against kids who were seven and eight and nine years old. That, that, that's what I'm worried about. That's what we should be focused on. And, and those folks on that stage want to distract us with, with every manner of, of politics or theater or, um, you know, uh, mental health or video games or there's not enough prayer in school. These are all things I've heard those people on that stage talk about and attribute these kinds of, of acts of terror to. Um, we just got to acknowledge that 
they actually have the power to change our laws, to improve them, where you can protect the Second Amendment and do a far better job of protecting the lives of the people in our community. That's what we need to be focused on. Un mensaje en español para los padres. Un mensaje en español para los padres. You were governor, you said that you would have the power to do that and change these laws. Administratively, how do you go about doing that? How can Governor Abbott do that? The, the governor literally sets the agenda for the state of Texas. Um, the governor has extraordinary power to bring the members of the legislature, Republicans and Democrats alike, around his priorities. And right now his priorities are keeping women from making their own decisions about their own body. Right now his priorities are pursuing the parents of transgender kids. Right now his priority is allowing anyone to carry a firearm in public without a background check. Though law enforcement stopped 35,000 Texans from doing that over the last five years, deeming them too dangerous to carry a loaded gun in public. He's now allowing all of them. The question all of you need to ask him is why does he want violent criminals to be able to carry guns on our streets? Go, go ask him that. He has not had to answer for any of this and he gets by with this theater. I'm calling it out. I came here to call it out to stop this because if we don't stop it, it will continue to happen. Well, you have said, thanks, we're going to head this way. It's almost like an idea. Okay, he is about to head out. So for those of you who are listening, that was Beto O'Rourke, gubernatorial candidate for Texas. He rushed the stage to be able to make a comment to Governor Greg Abbott seconds after the governor had just finished his remarks. Again, he went up to the stage. He did not go on the stage. He just went up to the stage, um, made some comments that we couldn't hear very well back in the back of the auditorium. You said you want to prevent the future shooting. You see him. He's he's walking away right now. He's finishing up. How is your presence here? How do you think that's going to perpetuate that? I don't know what more I can add. I just, I just shared all the, all the things that we could do as a state, the power that the governor has to change this, the fact that most of us in Texas do not want to accept this and are willing to make the changes legislatively to ensure that we don't continue to see this. It's on the governor. I think your next round of questions are for him. Why, why won't he do something? I, I'm here. I'm doing something. I told you what I would do as governor. He, what, what is he going to do? What do you, you think about you Chuck come out Schumer? And said that we're going to take you if you were elected, we want to take your guns. Now, how would you go about that? I want to make sure that 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 no one can ever do this to a child or a classroom again. So, I think at a minimum we should stop selling AR-15s and AK-47s. Better there are nine universal background checks. We should have red flag laws. We should have safe safe storage laws. These are things that most Texans, Democrat and Republican will agree on. These are things that gun owners and non-gun owners alike will agree on, agree on. All that we're missing is the political will by those who are in leadership positions in the state to actually do something in terms about of it. Yeah, right. that's that's it. That's it. That's it. Sorry, what do you think about Chuck Schumer not uh, saying he won't take up any new guns? Okay, for those of you who were